Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. In this video, we're going to be covering some web cache poisoning and we're going to be putting in an XXS payload. And this is something that you will find in the wild. It is something that I have come across in the wild. Sometimes it takes a little while in order to bypass some of the bad characters in order to get a cross site scripting to work. So we're going to walk through this example on port swigger. But I'm going to kind of explain to you different ways you can find this in the wild and actually get some kind of payload to work. And in this case, it's going to be cross site scripting. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So here we are on port swigger and it tells us we're going to be doing this web cache poisoning and it even tells us it's going to be unkeyed inside of a cookie. So we can go ahead and right click this and open it up in a new tab. Now I'm going to show you the way I did it and then we'll come back and look at the solution because the way I did this and the way the solution that says to do it is different. So we'll go ahead and let this load up. And because it told us that it's inside of a cookie, we can just go ahead and turn our intercept on and we can go ahead and take this and we can send it over to repeater. You're going to make sure that the host looks like this and matches that right there. So that way you have the right request and we'll, so we'll send this over to repeater. I didn't see that blinking. So I did send it here. It is. So what I like to always do whenever I have anything in repeater is I love to send it and just look at the response. And right here is what we want to see this X cache hit, which means that this request is stored inside of the cache. And the way web cache poisoning works is right here. We make a request, which we've already made and it will send the uh, result back to the user. But sometimes there's this extra little server right here and this is going to hold the cache. So that way anytime this extra server has seen this exact same request, it can save it over here. And what that does is it gives a relief or some kind of break. So that way all the requests are actually going to this main server. Some of them are going to be on this other server, which is going to be the cache and it's going to be sending them back and forth. So when we see this cache hit right here, it means it didn't actually go all the way back to this web server. It hit the cache and then the cache returned it so that way the server could save up some of its space so that way the server is not getting bogged down with all of the requests so that's why you have that cache and so you see this cache hit right here meaning we hit the cache but if we come over here and we add in what's called a cache buster and you can type anything in here so we can just say test and we can send this and it's going to tell us that the cache missed meaning that it was going to the cache the cache was searched it didn't have this specific URL being sent to it and it comes all the way to the website and then renders that back. But if we send this a second time, it is going to tell us that it is hit on the cache and it was 14 seconds ago that this has been saved in the cache. So we hit, hit it the second time. That's because our first request of test didn't exist. It sends it back to us and then the cache stores it. The second time we send it, it hits the cache. The cache says we have this URL and it sends it back to us. So the reason this is dangerous, let's send this again and see. So it says that it missed. This cache must be resetting every 30 seconds. So the reason this is dangerous is because we send an XSS payload to the website and it stores in the cache every single person who visits that specific url is going to hit that cross-site scripting and we could steal their cookies hijack their sessions or something along those lines when the cache sends this to them so if we can figure out how to manipulate this we can send our payload on a live target and then reset the at the reset of the cache and then our payload would be stored. So I hope that makes sense. We're gonna go ahead and move on with this specific lab. If this doesn't make sense, let me know down in the comments and we'll do another one of these labs and I'll try and explain it better. So here's what we have. So if we send this again, it should tell us it missed. We send it again, it's gonna tell us it hits and it'll tell us how old it is and it hit four seconds ago. So we're told that this is gonna be inside of the cookie over here. So it's unkeyed cookie. So we know exactly where this is gonna be. So if you come over to this right here, this prod cache, this is a dead giveaway of our location. If we type in, let's just say something and we send this, hopefully it doesn't hit. We have to wait four seconds or we can just add a one up here. And then we send this and we come down here, we can type in test and that doesn't show up and then we can type in something and our something shows up right here now what's interesting about this is this right here shows up inside of this script tag right here which means it's executing this and so what we can do with this is just close off this script tag like this with your simple script and we can close this off and then we can open up a new one and we can put in our alert 
and we want to alert and we'll say whoops we'll alert one and we can close this off and actually i'm not sure if we need to close this off we'll try it both ways so we'll close this off and now if we send this it should miss and our text looks really good um, the first time i did this what i did was i actually left this off right here we'll add another one up here so that way it misses if you look at this you can see that the text comes back it's not it didn't break the code right here it didn't close this off so this actually got sent as a string and it doesn't do anything so we actually really need to have this little closing script right here so that way you can see the difference right here and let's check i don't think we even need this because we have this closing off maybe we do because it's got this parentheses so let's go ahead and send this and it doesn't close so we do need this closing script tag right here so if we send this it shows up right here and it tells us it missed so if we send this again it's going to tell us that it hit so we have like 25 seconds to grab our cache buster and we can come up here and throw that in and if we send this it should pop a cross-site scripting for us i sent that on the wrong page we need to no we're gonna miss it send this and we should get our cross-site scripting but we hit we missed the cache dang it and the reason that didn't work the first time is because i have this typo right here in our script tag and i actually have a typo over here in our script tag and it tells us right here we have this alert one so we also have some html injection we could do or what would be considered like defacing because it's actually showing up on the web page that is a side note so we'll go ahead and send this again. I went ahead and sent it on the main page this time while I was trying to figure out where my typos were. And it pops for us our cross-site scripting. So sorry about the mess up there, but we got that to work. So one more thing about doing these cache busters. So you saw me type in this CB right here, equals and this test. The reason you test with some kind of parameter right here is that a way you're not actually screwing up the company's website. Like if you actually got a cross-site scripting to work and the cache resets like every 15 minutes and you set that on the main page, then you would have a problem. And also you want to be able to test in these parameters right here. So that way you can check down here what's going on and nobody's going to be visiting this URL right here on a live target. So you can test your cache poisoning like this. But if we were to test it on a live page and we send this and it tells us it misses and we see that it hits, you can actually test this by going to this parameter like you saw me do earlier when I had those typos in there and it should pop for us like this on the parameter as well. So you don't actually have to be sending this on the main page. This CB stands for Cash Buster. So now if we look at the solution, the way they did this was by closing off this um, what came before it inside of the cookie, some string, and they closed off this right here, which would close off this if you did that, and it should still be lit up for us. Okay, it's not gonna let me edit this over here, but this little quote would close off what came before it, and then you can put in your alert right here and then something after it. So the way I did it is the way you would typically try to get some kind of cross-site scripting to work in like a, inside of like a post form. And it works sometimes you can send cross-site scripting right here. So when I typed in test right here and it doesn't show up, sometimes you can send over something inside of your parameter that you made up your cache busting parameter and you can get a cross-site scripting to work over here. So I guess I should type in test. This is actually how I found it when I was in the wild. You put in a payload right here and then it would save in the cache. And the reason this is dangerous is I could just send a bunch of links right here with my payload in it. And if somebody clicked on it, then it would execute and I could steal their session or their cookie. So you can test the cookies. You can test this right here. You can add in, I think some of the other ones you add in like an X forwarded host right here and you try to send payloads that way. So there's lots of different ways you can play with this, but this is web cache poisoning with an example of cross-site scripting. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any comments down below.